Greetings, shrimps. This is Dr. Siren, and today I have a different type of video for you guys. Instead of doing my normal animatic or once-in-a-lifetime Whackcraft episode, which there should be one out later this week, hopefully, today I want to talk about the different digital art programs I've been using over the years. I've used around 13, I want to say. Those are the 13. I have 13 on my list. So we're just gonna start from the beginning. There's not really much to say as an intro, so let's just hop right into it. Um, the first one I used was back in around fourth grade when I started using Scratch. If you don't know what that is, it's this website where kids can code and I guess you can animate sort of because if you code the animations, it's it's kind of crazy. So I started using scratch.mit.edu and my account on there was, hold your applause, but it's Princess Stella MLP. I know, pretty crazy. Anyways, that's a name if I've ever heard one. It's quite notable that there were great artists on the site, like amazing artists. And I went back on there the other day and I was looking um, at my old profile and I was like, what? Okay, I could not draw. This was fourth grade, I could not draw, especially because I was using a trackpad and or a mouse at times. Well, mostly a mouse. And bro, I I could not. I had like over 700 unshared projects that I was like looking through and I was like, what even is half of this stuff? So that was something. And I was also looking at artists I knew or a not new, but artists I remember, I guess, from the site that where I remember were great, and they still are great, like the stuff they still had on there. And of course, they don't use it anymore. It was pixel based, so think very pixel, less vector. There was a vector thing you could do, but that would just round everything. It was very strange. Um, and according to Scratch, I joined six years and two months ago, so that's kind of long time. But the site is like super laggy now, and nothing loads. I was on it the other day, and literally nothing was loading i had to like get out of the site and wait like 10 minutes for doing it again because it just wasn't loading um and i found a super old thing of my voice here you go ask princess stella yay so please leave some comments so we can have some questions on here bye ask princess stella yay yeah. Please leave some comments and questions in in the comments below. Ask Princess Stella. Yay! Yeah, okay, makes sense. Where's the food? And that was September 3rd, 2015. And there's nothing loading. So that's it for Scratch. I'll probably put up some of my old art from there as I'm talking. The next one was Pixlr. Pixlr.com slash editor, I wanna say, was the URL. My sister actually is the one who introduced me to Pixlr. It's this online Photoshop. It's this free online Photoshop program. It's changed now, but the one I remember was very simple. You just do pixlr.com slash editor. No, it's, huh, I forgot the, what the URL was. I'll probably find it later. It was, it's this online Photoshop program and my sister would draw on it. Um, and the first thing I remember about that program was she was teaching me how to put plaid shirts on Disney princesses, make them hipsters. Don't know why. I don't know why that's what she taught me, but that's what she did. Again, trackpad, mouse, those different things. I used it over the years and I used it very well into my middle school years on my Chromebook, which are the worst computers I've ever had to use. If you have the ch choice between a Chromebook and any other computer, please go with any other computer. I hate Chromebooks. I would draw on it for years on Pixlr. In middle school, I would use my Chromebook and I did not have a mouse most times, so I had to use my trackpad and it was awful. I would draw on the bus. Like I would sit on the bus because my middle school is kind of far away from my house. And so I would sit on the bus and Essentially daylight savings, like if I took the late bus, it would be like very dark when I got to my stop where my mom would pick me up. Um, I just remember this one time I was sitting on the bus and I was drawing Loop and Taco from the Adventure Zone uh, using like a color palette. And it looked pretty cool in my head. It still looks pretty cool for like the, the stuff I made at that time. The original drawing I had done on paper in drama class. But yeah, it was, it was a good start. I just remember a lot of me just drawing in class with that. And I'll probably put up some of the old art if I can find it. Cause the site changed and my account doesn't exist anymore. So I can't see my library of stuff, but I hopefully I still have it on my Chromebook, but I don't want to use that thing. Number three is actually a sketchbook. I want to say it's called, it's this app. I don't know if it's the same sketchbook 
like Adobe Autodesk sketchbook or whatever. I don't remember if it's the same one, but I think it was called sketchbook. It was on my mom's old Samsung tablet. I don't remember when this was. It was somewhere middle school, sixth grade-ish, I wanna say, just based on the things I had drawn. I remember it had some cool brushes. Like I found that pretty cool. There's still a few pieces that I have that I can show. Here's one I did of uh, Blue Pearl. I remember her hair looked whack, so like, I don't know why. Or at least the traditional version of it. Yeah, that's the only one I really remember, but if I find more, I'll put them up here. There's not really much else to say about that, except that like, my mom's tablet is defunct and does not use anymore. Uh, number four was Pokemon Art Academy. I got this around fourth to fifth grade, I want to say. I bought it myself, it was $20 from Walmart. I could not wait for it to come, um, and I beat it in two days. It was very educational, but it was probably the most painful art experience ever. I, I want to say that because the screen was very small. So there's that. You only get two layers. The first layer, the top layer, is only for the lining pen. And the lining pen can only be one color at any given time. So if, you, if it's black and you are holding the lining pen and you're on that layer and you click blue, it will change all the lines you made with that pen to blue. It was strange, but it was okay because you could like change the opacity of that one. Um, and so you could do some like cool like shading with it, I guess. And then the other layer, the one under it would be for literally everything else. Literally everything else. There was only about four opacity settings and four sizes and you can only zoom in about three times and so there's that but it taught me how to shade and it taught me how more about line weighting because my friend had already taught me about that back in you know because she taught me after i don't remember the timeline is whack but no it taught me how to shade and that's why most of the shading in my drawings unless there's a designated light source comes from the top left corner because that's where most of it came from in the program i remember i couldn't find a stylus 90 percent of the time so i would use a mechanical pencil that had no lead and i remember i could never draw the actual pokemon when i first used it and so i kind of cheated and used the pokemon outline overlay because when you're doing like the free draw or the lessons and stuff there's like this little guide thing you press it you can get construction shapes overlay or or this other overlay I forgot was. And then you can get one where it's literally just like the outline of the Pokemon, where it's literally just like the line art of the Pokemon as an overlay. And I would use that and it would still come out trash. But I went back after years and used it until I got a drawing tablet. So that was about like two years ago. No, wait, last year, was it? I don't remember. Again, timeline is whack. The art was an improvement and it's a super tiny screen. So let's see, I will put up some things here. I remember there's one of Mewtwo. That's the only one I remember right now, but I'll put up some comparisons if I can get the 3DS and get the files off of that. And I'll also show some other art I did on there that wasn't Pokemon, because I did quite a bit of that. Number five, my brief experiences with Ibis Paint. I remember I've only used this program once. Um, I want to say ninth grade? I went to my friend's house and they had a tablet with Ibis Paint on it and I just drew some stuff. I didn't draw much with it. It's a decent-ish program, but like the ads are super annoying and the time lapse uh, feature was cool. I just remember I drew some of the event, some of the like the adventure zone stuff. It was, it was strange. So there's not really much to say about Ibis Paint since I haven't used it much, but there's that. After that, we have when I finally got a drawing tablet for my birthday last year. It's so crazy to think that was only last year. The program I started using was Krita. It's this free program that you can get on your computer. It's pretty decent. You can get a bunch of custom brushes online. You can do quite a bit of stuff with it. Yeah, so it was about November 2019, I got a drawing tablet, and it had much more freedom than Pokemon Art Academy. That's not saying much because most everything has much more freedom than Pokemon Art Academy. Heck, traditional art seems to have much more freedom than Pokemon Art Academy. It was my first drawing tablet, and it still is, since I haven't gotten an, like that type of drawing tablet since then. That, that tablet's a lot of wires. There's like two things that plug into the tablet, three things that plug into the computer, and there's the pen. And it's a pretty decent program. Um, I did some art on it that I posted on my Instagram when I first got the program, and it was like the program I used until, um, I wanna say around December-ish? No, I was still doing it in December. I don't remember when. I remember I did a lot of different drawings on it. One of the drawings I remember specifically, well, I remember basically all of them, but one I did, like it was like New Year's, was this one of Minecraft YouTubers. And it's funny because the caption, when I posted this one, the caption was, man, 2020 really got me here drawing Minecraft YouTubers. And something about me spending my New Year's uh, Eve slash 
morning, because it was like 2 a.m., watching Skeppy. And it's really funny because little did I know that my entire year would be basically be Minecraft YouTuber related, mostly Hermitcraft. Except for like, because it got into it around March, but January and February, March, it's just like, all right. Then in March, I was like, ah, yes, Minecraft YouTubers. And I haven't looked back since, and help me please, I am drowning in block men. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> So there's Krita. The next one actually is Drawception. It's a website where it's like telephone. It's a game of telephone, but drawing. It's really fun, actually. And I spent a lot of time dur in, during quarantine playing this. And I started playing it on the computer using my drawing tablet. And then I moved over to my dad's tablet, um, his iPad. It's actually how I learned about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure because that was a huge meme on there. And now I know how to draw three of the characters, those characters are Jotaro, Giorno, and Dio. So the only ones in on a draw. It was timed because, you know, it's a game of telephone, got, it's timed and stuff, and it had different color palettes depending on the color palette the original creator of that round used because you could buy different color palettes to use. The undo was weird. I don't actually remember if there was an undo feature or if it was only erasing. I don't remember now. It was kind of strange, especially when I was using it on the iPad because, like, zoom in was kind of weird because you can I could at least zoom in on the iPad thing. I did some pretty decent drawings on it though, so I'll probably show some of those because I have, I think I have some of those still. I'll probably look back on my profile. That was number seven. Number eight was Procreate. I actually got Procreate before the drawception thing, but that's just how I ordered it. So Procreate. So my dad got a tablet and I had told him about Procreate before he got a tablet. I was just told him about that and I didn't even know he was going to get a tablet and he did and he got Procreate for me. And so that's pretty pog. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I did not like it at first. It was, it seemed way too complex. It was, it just was way too weird for my Krita brain, especially because the iPad screen, it's smooth, right? While like my drawing tablet and the 3DS I drew on for Pokemon Art Academy, those had like more rougher screens. And so it felt more like paper sort of. And I was more used to that texture. And I was like, hmm, I can't deal with this smooth screen. Holy this Apple pencil, it's weird, what the heck? Um, so I did not really like it. And I felt really uninspired when using it. I was just like, oh, all my creativity feels like sapped when I was using this. Um, and I abandoned it actually at first to use other programs like Krita or other programs closer to Krita. So I'm going to come back to Procreate after I talk about these other programs that I use when I did not look like Procreate at first. I want to talk about Metabang Paint. It's another free program and I got it when I didn't want to use Procreate and it was a lot like Krita, especially compared to Procreate. It had a really cool pencil brush. I really liked how it was. It was really nice. It had a really nice watercolor brush thing and it was good for comics because it had this thing where you could easily make a comic outline template sort of thing. I made this, made this like undertow comic. There's actually a few panels I'm really proud of. It had like a glow. I was able to easily do this cool glow thing. It began to feel too limited, but then I used some other programs like uh, Sketchbook. This is Autodesk Sketchbook, this time on my dad's iPad. I could not get behind the three finger swipe to undo because I was so used to the double tap to undo because every other program I used on that tablet used double tap, which is superior in my opinion, because it's like you're holding the pencil, boom. It's just like, it's just like part of my hand motion. Eh, it's not that good. Like it has a kajillion brushes, but none of them really my vibe and I couldn't really get behind any of them. And it was different than the one that I used on my mom's tablet, I remember. So I don't know if it was the same. I don't think it was the same app. It might've been, I don't know. It, it had been years in between. Eh, it's just, Eh, yeah, just eh. So then I went back to Procreate uh, after that. I think there was a couple of other uh, programs in between there, but I don't remember what they were because they were not memorable in my opinion. I went back to Procreate. Procreate is not free though. It's about, I think $10, I don't know. I wanna say it's definitely, I'd say it's definitely worth it. Although when you first get it, you might not want to use it cause it's, it's hard to learn. Uh, but once you get once you get used to it, oh, it's so fun. I came back to it because I wanted more brush options. I wanted, I realized I wanted texture in my art. I was working on this um, spider sona, which I never ended up actually using in anything. She's French. Um, her design was pretty cool. Here it is. I was like, I want texture when I'm coloring her. And so I used Procreate to do that. And I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. I just kept using it. And I found tons of custom brushes online for free on the Procreate forum. So if you have Procreate and you want more brushes, just go online, look up free Procreate brushes, and there should actually be a, a forum on the Procreate website that has 
a huge collection of free brushes and it's so good. And I began like developing techniques I would do and it's like my favorite program, it's amazing. Recently I bought this Jing sketch pack. It's normally like pretty expensive, but it was like on sale, like really on sale and I was like, ooh. And so I got it and it came with like these pro uh, these um tutorials sort of of like how Jimmy, that's the artist, did these um different like did it did it did their techniques and I was able to learn how to really do lineless art and the brushes are really cool and basically help I fall into the rabbit hole of lineless art and I don't know if I can get up or go back. So there's that. Well with Procreate I had to get some other programs too for my school because I'm in this digital media class, this graphic design class, and so we get like the Adobe stuff for free for this year. We don't get to keep it after the school year, but you know, it's free for us to use for during the school year and such. We can use it for whatever we want. Number 11 was Photoshop, you know, Adobe Photoshop, the one that everyone talks about, the famous Photoshop. I have not used the PC version yet, so I don't really know how that is. And I used the iPad version. It's eh. Like as a drawing program, it's eh. I don't know how it is as an editing program because I haven't really used it for that. I haven't used it that much and it currently seems just limited since I don't really know how to use it. Number 12 is Adobe Fresco, which is like the more art program of the two. It's on the iPad as well. It's better than Photoshop for drawing. It's got some pretty cool brushes. The pencil brush, the default pencil brush is so good. I love sketching with that thing. The, ro the rotation mechanic, like when you're trying to rotate the canvas, just flipping it around and stuff, is kind of whack and like broken and like choppy. So if they can fix that, then maybe I would use the program more. It's good for sketches, but it's kind of eh for like continuing a piece since I don't really know how to use it again. It's got a pretty decent halftone, but the pencil brush, moi, like chef's kiss. The Jing sketch pack actually has a pencil that's sort of similar to that. And I, I really like it. It's just that it's just, I don't know how to describe it. I'll probably show something on screen of it, but like, it's just so good. I don't know why, I just love sketching with it. And then the final one, the final one, number 13 is MS Paint. I've, this, I don't know how to even start. It's, I use it for jokes. Like I use it for jokes, it's pretty decent. And I've got literally like no complaints because it's MS Paint. Like people can do amazing stuff on it. I've seen amazing art. Homestuck, isn't that MS Paint? Yeah, just I've seen amazing artists use MS Paints. Like, bro, that's kind of crazy. I only use it for jokes since I do not have the patience for MS Paint. I've been using it for a long time and I would just occasionally use it, you know, for jokes. I use it for one of my thumbnails because I didn't have like my drawing programs with me, uh, my drawing tablet. So I just use my mouse on MS Paint. I think it was for the It's Been So Long cover. Yeah, so that's my history with digital art. And currently I've just been using Procreate. And so if you're a beginning artist, I would recommend using whatever like free program you can get. Like don't get a super expensive program until like you feel comfortable with the programs you already are, have used. So like free programs, MetaBang is really good. I've heard about Fire Alpaca. I don't know like much about it, so I don't know if it's good or not. But yeah, I recommend using free pro programs, get used to those. Video tutorials are pretty nice sometimes. Just depends on who you watch, I guess, and like what kind of thing you're looking for. But yeah, so hope you liked this video. I know it's a bit different than what I normally do, but if you want more types of videos like this in the future, like hearing about art stuff, then of course put that in the comments. You can like and comment and subscribe if you want to and join I guess the shrimps? Is that what I'm calling you? Dr. Siren and the Shrimps sounds like a band name, and if it is, it, if that's now the band name, then yeah, join my band, uh, Dr. Siren and the Shrimps, by subscribing. I guess that's what my brand is right now. I guess here's my outro.